Well, hello everybody, welcome to Coding 101. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the do's and don'ts of JavaScript. As a beginner, you must learn to keep your code simple and precise. And yet many beginners struggle to keep their code neat. Luckily, there's available to us simple and easy steps that we can take to make our code more efficient. And I'm going to show you what to do and what not to do to make your coding life much more easier. Let's get started. Let's just jump into it. Um, the first thing that I'm going to teach you is how to use the map function instead of using the traditional for loop that many d beginners uh, really, really know. So I'm going to show you how many people do this. Uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to create an array and this array, I'm going to fill it with numbers, five. And so what we want to do with this array is that we want to make multiples of two. So in order to do that, we're going to multiply each number within the array as uh, with two and we're going to return uh, a new array so traditionally most developers this is what they would do they would say var and they would say i is equals to zero and say i should be always be uh, less than okay i think that's it yes and then i plus plus and so, but before that, of course, you have to create a new array, which you're going to fill up your multiples of two. You're going to call it array two. And you're going to just push up the multiples. So you're going to say R. You're going to take whatever our, um, number is in that old array, and you're going to multiply it by two. And that'll be that. And once you're done, console log your new array. Let's run this file. And would you look at that? How easy was that? Wrong. It's not easy at all. There's a much more simpler way to do this instead of doing all this mumbo jungle. So what we're simply going to do, I'm going to just create a new array. I'm going to call it const r, I'm going to call it r3, let me just call it r2 so it just doesn't get confusing. We're going to use the map function, I'm going to say arr map, I'm going to just say whatever number, this represents all the numbers in that array, and we're going to multiply them by 2, and then we're done. That's it. See how simple this is? It's just one line of code and look at all this. This is a lot, but with um, just a simple line of code, we're done. And we can console log this, of course, to confirm that we will get the desired results. And there you go. How easy was that? So just one simple line of code has managed to make our code much neater and much more cleaner than this uh, mumbo jumbo that we have over here. So the other thing that I'm going to teach you what to do in JavaScript and what not to do is the proper way to use an if statement, right? So many of you would probably use your if statement like this. You would say, first, let's create a Boolean. I'm going to say if um, is coding on one. And we're going to say true. So that's a Boolean variable. So we say if is coding 101, then console.log, yay, else console.log, boo. So this is how you would probably do an if statement. So I'm going to teach you a new way of doing an if statement instead of using, this is just too much, this is too dirty, and it's not cleaner. Um, so let's put this in a function. Let's put this in a function. I think it would make much more sense if it's in a function. And um, we're going to call the function is coding. 
it's just a simple function it doesn't do anything fundamental so just focus on um, the way the code works instead of uh, the function definition or the function itself let's indent this so that it's much more cleaner and replace our console logs with return statements that's much better so this is how you would probably do it um, but I'm going to do a second function I'm going to copy this function over here move it down a bit and call it 2 forget to clear up this terminal So this is the old way of doing the if else statement, but if you want to use it much better, this is how you'd probably use it. I'm going to show you three ways of making this much cleaner. First, it's by using that if statement. We're going to get rid of this. So if this is true, return yay, right? We don't need to write an else statement because we know that if this is not true, then this will not execute. So the next line will execute. So instead of writing an else statement, we can just write return foo. So I'm just gonna copy this function down and I'm gonna show you the other way of doing this, a much, even much more simpler way of doing this. I'm going to get rid of this. This is just going to be one line. Can you believe that we're going to do this with just one line and in very short code? We're just going to make our return statement, put our curly brackets in there. We're going to say is coding 101, which is our global Boolean variable. And then if this condition is satisfied or is true, we're going to say yay. And if the conditional statement is not true, we're going to say boo and just like that with just one line we've managed to do something that we could have done with plenty of lines over here so you can see the difference uh, in coding uh, in that manner so i would advise that you learn how to code um, your if statements in these two ways there's nothing wrong with using the if statements but you just need to use them a better way in fact best practice is to try and avoid using multiple conditional statements it's too messy on your code so what many professional developers advise is try to avoid using many conditional statements so another do and don't in JavaScript is to avoid using the VAR uh, and instead using let and const. In fact, don't even use VAR in your code. I know in some of the tutorials that I've done here, I've been using VAR, but I've been using it for simplicity purposes so that I could just um, arrive at a point where I can explain to you what is the difference between let, const, and VAR. So I'm still cooking up that video and I'm going to be doing it in a short while. And after I do that video, we're no longer going to be using VAR, we're going to be using let and const. So as a developer, as a beginner, make sure that you avoid the usage of VAR. I know it's a very difficult transition to do, but it's very important that you learn uh, what let and const are and use them more often. So the reason behind abandoning VAR is that it should provide clear meaning that your variable should provide clear meaning regarding to the purpose of your variable and the context at which they are used so just from a surface level const should generally hold references to values that should not be changed over time so if you're going to initialize a variable like const name equals coding 101 what this means is that this variable over here is not going to be modified or it's not going to be changed. Well, it's not going to be changed because it's a primitive variable, but even if it was a, 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 a an array or an object 
because it has been defined with a const, it's not going to change. So const should just hold references to values that cannot be changed over time. Um, you are not allowed to mutate those objects at all, even if they are not primitive values. I'm going to uh, show you, I'm going to uh, teach you what are primitive values in another video. Uh, while let on the other hand uh, should indicate that a value might be changed over time uh, or might be reassigned uh, over time. So if you try to change the value of const, JavaScript will tell you that it's an error or it's a bug. So a good use case for const is uh, storing a reference to a DOM element, which you always want to keep in that variable. That's a good use case for const. So another good use case for const is by assigning um, things like names, things like IDs, uh, which are uh, variables that uh, can never be changed, are uh, always constant. Um, so it's very important for the security of your code that you choose to use uh, const and let instead of using var. Var is just too ambiguous, but if you're using const and let, uh, a constant let you are able to define the purpose of the variables that you want to use and keep them within that context so really it's as simple as that use let and const do not use var So another do and don't that I want to teach you in JavaScript. How do you concatenate strings in JavaScript? Is this what you do? You would say coding. And let me say maybe you want to concatenate that string with a number. Is this what you do? And then maybe you want to say YouTube. Is this what you do? This is one of the things that as a developer, you must let go. You must let go and put it in the past or put it in the back of your mind because you're not going to use this ever again. There's a new thing called template literals. So template literals are a way for you to concatenate strings or interpolate uh, other data types into strings. Um, and they're very much easier to use. You don't have to deal with all this mess. So this entire code that we have over here, instead of using these codes and these plus, uh, we can do this by just using backticks. And we can just write coding. And if we want to put that 101 in there, Let's say maybe we have a variable called 101 and we want to put it in there. Const. Um, what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it last. And that's 101. And I want to put it in the string. I want to concatenate it with the string. So what I do is just I put a dollar sign and I put curly brackets and I put that variable in there. And I'm going to put YouTube at the very end. I'm going to get rid of this space over here. And I'm going to get rid of this first console log statement. I'm going to run that file. Let's we'll see how it works. See how easy it is. So this is how next time you want to interpolate um, different data types, so not like numbers into your string, this is how you would do it. Or if you want to concatenate your strings, um, this is how essentially you would do it. No more uh, of that plus signs and those codes that you've been using. This is how you need to handle your string concatenation and interpolation and all that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, turn your post notification on, and I will see you next time on Coding 101.